thanks to Vernal for sponsoring this video. So yes, now that I have moved from the UK to Dubai permanently, well, I say permanently, at least for a year. And if I don't like it after a year, I'll go back. But if I do like it, I'll stay for a few more years. Anyway, with that move comes the opportunity to build an all new desk setup to start from a blank slate. The room that I'm in is around 3.3 meters by 3.3 meters in size. And I knew I wanted to make it my office from the moment I saw it due to how large the window is. It's nearly floor to ceiling and wall to wall. First thing I did was put down a rug to help with sound deadening and to make it feel a bit more comfortable under my feet. However, I'm not completely sold on this rug. I feel like it's a bit too light colored for this room. I feel like a darker one would look better, so I might change it. The desk I have is the Vernal standing desk with the walnut finish. The size that I have here is 60 inches by 27 and a half inches. I knew I definitely wanted walnut this time round due to how it's just more classic looking and more luxurious compared to a standard white desk. I wanted to go for a more sort of classy aesthetic. Putting it together was a breeze as the bottom frame is already attached to the desk. All I needed to do was attach the legs. First thing I noticed when I put it together is how heavy it was. It's much heavier than any other desk I've built before. It feels like an absolute tank, which is definitely a good thing because it can help with the rigidity when using it in the standing position. And the desk itself can also take a weight of up to 350 pounds, which is insane. That is a lot. What I particularly liked is the provided cable management tray to hide and manage the cables. There's also two cable grommets, one on each side of the desk to feed the cables through. The walnut finish is fantastic. It has a nice dark tone to it compared to other types of walnut that I've seen, which I definitely prefer. I also have the desk extension board, which adds an additional 12 inches of desktop space. You could actually have two of these, one on both sides of the desk. It is a sit stand desk with the option to have four different height presets. Usually the biggest issue a lot of people have with standing desks is the shake. And this is by far one of the most solid standing desks I've come across. And it's definitely because all of the tolerances are just very tight. They also have a bunch of different accessories to make any setup even better. I'm actually waiting on a few myself. Vernal currently has a summer sale if anyone is looking for a good deal. And they'll be doing some desk accessory giveaways as well as half price chairs with a purchase of a desk. You can also use the code OLIA for 8% off. So make sure to check them out. They actually make some reasonably priced standing desks. I've specifically placed my desk in front of my window to combat myopia, which is where your eyes can get used to looking at something close to you, like your monitor. Over time, your eyes can then struggle to focus on things that are further away. So I regularly like looking outside to keep the muscles in my eyes active, focusing on things further away. I've also found that it just helps keeps my eyes fresh day to day. Next up is my monitor. I have the Pro Display XDR with the stand. If you're interested in this wallpaper, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below incredible monitor albeit very expensive for me though that 6k resolution is just glorious and something that blew my mind recently was the amount of difference there is between a 6k display and a 4k display you'd think going from 4k to 6k it doesn't sound like much but i asked chat gpt to do the math a standard 4k display has 8.2 million pixels but the pro display xdr has 20.3 million pixels that's a 12 million pixel difference which is just absolutely insane i had no idea there were so many more pixels on a 6k display it's why working on a large 6k display feels a lot more productive to me the pixel density makes for everything being tack sharp whilst also giving me lots of room for windows would i recommend the pro display xdr for the majority of people no Unless you specifically need a resolution dense display with super high brightness and all of the other pro features this comes with, I would actually instead recommend one of the 4K OLED displays that have come out this year. I recently picked this one up from MSI for my gaming setup and this monitor is unreal. If I haven't already made a video on this OLED monitor, it will be coming soon. I think the only people that would benefit from a pro display XDR fall into a few categories. Designers who work in apps like Figma, the screen estate makes it incredible for design work, and then photographers and videographers who need super accurate colors and HDR capability. I fall into all three of those categories, so for me, it's a worthy investment. Next up is the webcam. Because the Pro Display XDR doesn't have a webcam, I have the Insta360 link. I've mentioned this webcam on the channel before, 
but it's a pretty incredible device. It has all sorts of tracking features, AI features, and the quality that comes out of it is fantastic. Next up is the Cal Digit TS4, a much needed dock due to the amount of accessories I connect to my Mac. This will be the hub of my whole setup. On the front, there are two SD card slots, two USB-C slots, a USB-A slot, and a headphone jack. On the back, there is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, four additional USB-A ports, three Thunderbolt ports, headphone and mic input, an additional USB-C port and a DisplayPort 1.4 port. Just a huge array of ports. I initially put this on top of my desk, but then I ended up mounting it to the bottom of my desk a few days later. I have these 3D printed brackets that my friend Con provided me. Some of you may already know who he is, absolute legend. No joke, he actually bought these brackets all the way from the UK to Dubai just so I can have them in my setup. What an absolute madman. Having the dock under the desk and close to me just makes it much easier to access the ports and sort of things that I need, especially the SD card slot. Next up are the speakers. I went with the Audio Engine A2 Plus this time around, a compact set of desktop speakers that are ideal for close listening on a desk like this. I have them connected via USB, so they're connected to the dock, which my Mac will then be connected to. The audio simply runs through there. You can also have a standard line in and they have Bluetooth for wireless audio. On the back, there are inputs and outputs. I'm using the outputs for a subwoofer. There's also a volume dial, which can be turned all the way to turn off the speakers. I love the minimal all black design and they sound absolutely incredible, especially when paired with a subwoofer. For the money, they're so worth it. But I do need to get some speaker wedges to angle them more towards my face because they're sort of angled towards my chest. They sound much better when they're actually angled towards your ears. The subwoofer I have is from Klipsch, which I'm not gonna lie, is just ginormous. It's much bigger than I expected. Thankfully, I have the room for it. And boy, does it sound insane. It's absolutely wild. I feel like it can shake the whole house if I want it to. But at the same time, I can also adjust it so that it's super smooth and subtle. I also very much like the copper colored woofer. I think it looks quite neat. To keep my devices charged, I have a Ugreen power strip, and this is pretty awesome as it has four USB ports on the front that can deliver up to 100 watts of power, but it also has two outlets on the back. So if I need to quickly plug in something for whatever reason, I don't have to reach under my desk. I can just plug it in right here. For the laptop tray, I initially had the 12 South Curve. It's great, clean and minimal, but I ended up changing it for the desk laptop stand from Native Union. I saw it and thought, that looks sick. I have to have that. It's built like an absolute tank made mostly from metal and has a fabric surface for where the laptop sits to protect it from scratches. There's a ton of adjustability so you can angle the laptop and change the height. The base can also be used as a tray for a phone or other accessories and there's even a groove for a pen. Really happy with this purchase. It fits the premium aesthetic that I'm going for. I'm still rocking my 2021 M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is connected with the one Thunderbolt cable to the CalDigit dock that I mentioned earlier. The Thunderbolt cable is the one that comes in the box with the CalDigit dock, and I've simply fed the cable through the cable grommet just to keep everything tidy. I did also add this Govee M1 LED strip to the back bottom of my desk, but I wouldn't recommend it because if you're someone like me who is looking for accurate white colors, so whether you're looking for just a nice natural white or a warm white, I found that it's just not that great. I feel like the CRI of it just isn't that good. However, if you're someone who likes RGB, you want to have all the sort of colors under the rainbow, you will love it. It's bright and it has an absolute ton of customization. I have a full grain leather desk mat with the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse on top. It's absolutely wild how controversial the Magic Mouse is. People absolutely love it or they absolutely hate it. I love it. I think it's great. I've been using it for 13, 14 years now without any issues, but it's not for everyone. And that's completely okay. That's completely fine. It would actually be weird if everyone was forced to use these peripherals. I think it's actually great that we have so much choice. So I completely get it. The Magic Mouse for some people is very, very uncomfortable. There are so many other great choices out there. But for those who do love the Magic Mouse, please let me know in the comments below because I'm sure there are a lot of you who also love the Magic Mouse. If you don't like the Magic Mouse, please also leave in the comments what mouse you're using, what mouse you prefer. For charging my phone, Apple Watch and AirPods, I have this Nomad charger. It might just be one of the most premium chargers you can get. It's incredible. Built like a tank, made mostly from metal. I love how clean and minimal it looks. It doesn't scream typical desk charger. Nomad have done a great job with the design of this thing. The chair I have is the Herman Miller Aeron. 
please do not get a crappy gaming chair they're just not worth it whatsoever obviously the Aeron is quite pricey but if you go on like Facebook marketplaces or other places like that you can get them for pretty cheap you can get them for less than half the price for like 300 400 500 dollars which I think is then well worth buying if you don't care about having it brand new because you're sitting in a chair for hours every day do you really want to have future back problems do you really want to have issues with your posture and stuff having a high quality office chair is just well worth the investment i'm really happy with this setup right now i think the way everything is in front of the window and stuff it's just nice it's very different from my previous setups i anticipate that i'll keep it like this for quite a while i don't anticipate changing it anytime soon oh and another thing is a lot of people ask me how do i keep my desk setup clean very simple answer microfiber cloth like that's all you need. I just wipe it down regularly once a week, especially because obviously I'm taking photos and videos and stuff. I just like keeping my stuff clean. I just like keeping my gadgets clean. I would recommend just getting a microfiber cloth like this. You can get them from Amazon for super cheap. I'll of course leave links to everything down in the description below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.